Jersey uh, for a couple of reasons, and I, I don't believe I'll need to take five minutes, Mr. Chairman. But one, we all know that the deposit insurance fund has been challenged, at least as I read this material. Uh, it's unclear to me um, exactly where the funding would come from for the particular this retroactive amendment. Uh, if there was any type of CBO score, I'm unaware of it. I, I was trying to listen to the debate. I didn't hear one presented. So we ultimately don't really know what the cost of this uh, provision would be. We know uh, that the FDIC, frankly, has had to be uh, somewhat creative uh, in dealing with the deposit insurance fund. I believe they are, uh, have had depository institutions now uh, uh, put in, I think, three years of assessments uh, in advance. So here we have a fund that is challenged, not unlike just about every other government insurance fund we know. And here we're going to add yet one more financial burden. Uh, as we know, unfortunately, there will, in all probability, be more bank failures and the DIF will be called upon, the deposit insurance fund will be called upon yet again. Uh, and as uh, they are struggling to maintain it at the appropriate capitalized level, I just think it's incredibly unwise uh, for us to put extra burdens there. Uh, the second point I would make on the tag is, again, programs that were meant uh, for a moment, uh, an emergency calling for financial stability uh, does not necessarily equate into programs that we ought to enact in perpetuity. Uh, we still have a recession. Everybody knows that we still have one of the highest unemployment rates in a quarter of a century. But the financial stability component that was so vivid in September of 08, uh, that moment has passed. And again, if we haven't, I, I, I would agree that a specific separate hearing on these provisions would be called for. And then I, I guess I'm just somewhat curious, Mr. Chairman, going forward, because I heard you say I believe that we will be following the parliamentary procedure and rules of the House, but I, I, just for point of clarification, I'm just curious about how, if these provisions were not either in the Senate-based bill or the House-based bill, what is the scope by which the chairman is, is using, what basis that this if is? The gentleman we yield, I will say it again. I, I apologize if I was mumbling because I've said it twice. And it was the ruling I gave when the gentleman in California's amendment was challenged. If the general subject matter is in the uh, in the bill, then I believe we should entertain uh, 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 amendments based on it. That's the that's the general approach. There were not strict rules for conferences, um, but that's the essential uh, policy. That if if it is something that sub if the subject matter is addressed, deposit insurance being mainly uh, a major piece of this, then I will entertain other amendments as I did in the earlier case. I, I appreciate the chairman for his clarification. And I yield back, Mr. Chairman. All right, the gentleman from Kansas. Uh, 